When you talk to other business leaders here, do you get the sense that some of those who had even switched to Trump yes, they, will switch they back? I think it's possible. Yeah, I would hope so. I mean, I think that they, I think, listen, they are a herd of pragmatists. And when the wind shifted and it was really clear if Biden was staying in, Trump was going to be president. I think when that changed, I think, again, it, for everybody, and it certainly did for people who were wavering or who said for economic reasons, <coughs> oh, let's chime into Trump quickly. Yet another big money donor has his sights set on getting rid of Federal Trade Commission Chair Lena Khan for, you know, enforcing antitrust laws, preventing mega mergers from happening. Something that those who are already incredibly successful really, really don't like. They want to increase the barriers of entry, something that Lena Khan is trying to deal with. Now, Barry Diller, who's the chairman and senior executive of IAC and Expedia Group, says that business leaders were already placing their bets on Donald Trump, donating money to him, planning on supporting him as the new president of the United States. But now they're reconsidering since Biden is no longer the presumptive Democratic nominee, since Kamala Harris is. And so uh, she uh, might be more receptive to the idea of getting rid of Lena Khan. Diller, by the way, called Lena Khan a dope, and uh, he elaborates on how much he dislikes her in this next clip. There have been reports that a number of prominent Democrats have been lobbying Harris to drop people like Lena Khan. Do you think that that's gonna happen? And would you lobby for that? Yeah, I would. You would? Yeah, I think she's a dope. That you Barry, what's the speechless. biggest problem? It's just the, uh, the 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 regulatory, the idea that nobody's allowed to do any mergers or acquisitions with Lena Khan. What's what's well, your biggest I think, issue? I, I I think what it is is that there's an absolute conviction based upon what she has done that almost anything that business wants to do to expand itself, to combine with others for efficiency and other reasons, is just not allowed. It's almost like. It's it's a wet blanket that has been thrown on all of this, and I don't think that's productive. I mean, I look, there are very clear cases where competition needs to be regulated, et cetera, et cetera. But it seems her point of view is everything is bad. I would have, and 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 everyone is bad. Okay, I don't think this needs to be explained, but just in case, let me explain why it's important to have someone like Lena Khan as the head of the FTC. When you have these mega mergers, you end up with less options as the consumer. So think of it this way, let's say you're living in an apartment building, you don't get an option in regard to who your cable service provider is or your internet service provider. For me, I have to rely on Spectrum, I have no other options. So Spectrum can charge me whatever they want. And by the way, they do every year, they increase the rate by 10 to $20. I have no other choice. Lena Khan is the kind of person who sees that as an injustice in our economic system. So when you see these billionaires talking about doing away with Lena Khan, they're, they're at war with you, the consumer. They want you to have less options. They want these mega mergers to happen. So you only have maybe one, maybe two options when it comes to various services, various businesses that you might be interested in being a consumer of. So it's just so incredibly frustrating. Look, I think they're gonna do it. I think Lena Khan is done for, to be honest with you. Because there's a lot of money going into Harris's campaign to do away with Lena Khan. I'm sure that similar lobbying is happening on the Republican side as well. And so her days are probably numbered, but it's just so sad to see it. And it's sad to see that there's like no aggressive pushback on these talking points by executives, you know, I would like to see some Democrats provide some cover or defense of Lena Khan, but they're not doing that. Hey, don't scroll away. Come back, come back. Because before the video continues, we just want to urge you to lend your support to TYT. You power our honest reporting. You do it at tyt.com slash team and we love you for it. Oh, of course not. They don't want to ang anger corporate donors. Uh, but to be fair, the Biden administration, they did put in Lena Khan. So that's a huge uh, you know, positive and credit you should give to Joe Biden for doing that. So now look, I don't necessarily agree with Lena Khan on the so-called tech monopolies. Uh, but here's who agrees with her on monopolies overall. 
Adam Smith, the guy who literally wrote the book on capitalism. And so, you know, if you went to business school as I did, or if you took any kind of economics class, you know, the first, one of the first things they teach you is that when you're setting up a capitalist system, you must have a check on monopolies. Because monopolies naturally form, and when they do, they immediately try to kill off the free market. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna maintain a free market, you must bust monopolies. If you don't, you're gonna lose the free market entirely, and it's just gonna turn into corporatism or crony capitalism. There's a couple of words for it, right? So that's what Lena Khan's doing. If you wanna disagree around the edges, hey, I don't think she should go to the tech industry as much as the oil industry, etc. Okay, great, good intellectual conversations to have, good important policy conversations to have. You wanna talk about overregulation? I'm all ears, sometimes Democrats do overregulate. For example, I don't agree with their regulations on ride shares. The Ubers, the Lyft, etc. the regulation they passed in California. I, I don't necessarily agree with rent control. So we could have rational discussions about economic policy. But when I see every owner of a giant multinational corporation on TV going, I'm giving millions of dollars and in return, I would like the head of this political appointee, proverbially of course, and politically. And I want you to fire her. Because I just bribed you, I mean paid you, I mean gave you a campaign contribution. And I don't care to have a nuanced discussion about what she's right about and what she is wrong about. She's preventing us from having giant companies that rule over your lives, occupy you and oppress you. Mm -hmm. And so she's gotta go, she's, if she's, she's bothered us because we demand to have complete control over your lives. This, you're un, living under corporate rule. And so here's the heads of these giant corporations going, how dare you raise your head? So make sure that you fire her now that you've gotten your orders, Kamala Harris. Whether well, she does it is a different question. Understand that Lena Khan is not a legislator, okay? She is not making up rules. She's not passing legislation that increases the number of regulations. Her job is merely to enforce the laws and the rules as it pertains to antitrust. They don't want her to do that. They they don't want a cop on the beat. So that's why they want to get rid of Lena Khan. Now, can I, I'm sorry, Anna, can I just add one quick thing to that? Guys, they're saying nonsensical things. And Barry Diller and, and Reed Hoffman are super smart guys. They're not dummies, right? They're saying like, oh, she's a, uh, fighting against monopolies. That's terrible. Why is that terrible? You can, that's a dumb thing to say for very smart people. Okay, no, if you say, hey, I have an issue, I don't think in this particular industry it is monopoly power. Okay, that's a fair comment to say. But if you say that you're against her because she's fighting against monopolies in every industry, well, then you're saying, I don't really believe in the free markets or capitalism. And so that's why it's totally unacceptable what they're saying. I mean, Diller called her a dope. That's right. You're, you're gonna call Lena Khan dumb, really? Oh, then why are you so worried about her? Why don't you run circles around her? Because I acknowledge Barry Diller is very smart. If she's a dope, you could easily run circles around her. Apparently, you're actually worried that she's not a dope. Now, while members of the Democratic Party haven't really done much to defend her and the excellent work she's been doing, luckily, she's good at defending herself. And she's always composed, she's always principled, and she always stays on message. So let's take a look at how she defended herself while speaking to Bloomberg. I have heard specifically multiple tech executives and investors complain about how they can't do deals on your watch. Do you have any concerns that your agenda has at all alienated the tech community um, or, or could impact uh, the, the impact of your agenda going forward? You know, it's been such an honor to serve in the Biden-Harris administration, and you know, we're just focused on on doing our work. Uh, what I oftentimes hear from the business community, including small businesses, including entrepreneurs, is that they want markets to be more open and more fair and more competitive, rather than incumbents being able to squash out nascent competitive threats. I mean, our free enterprise system is one where the best ideas are supposed to win, and we've historically seen that it's the disruptors and entrepreneurs that have been a key vector of innovation. And so our job at the FTC when we enforce the antitrust laws is to make sure that our markets stay open and fair and competitive. And that's something that you know most businesses and most entrepreneurs uh, should really be able to get behind. And she's 
public enemy number one, according to these corporate executives. What she just said there is empirically true. Big business not only winds up having a monopoly power and being able to raise your prices, as we saw during inflation, they bragged about price gouging and shareholder calls. We've shared that with you many times. They're like, oh, it turns out that they could bear more costs. Well, why? Because they don't have any options. You own all the supermarkets. So they raise prices way beyond inflation and they bragged about it. So you see how it hurts that. But it also hurts small businesses. Who are trying to compete in a so called free market. And by the way, you can tell that that's true because the right wing has invested in a lot of smaller businesses fighting against the big tech companies, and all of a sudden, they're for breaking up the big tech companies and they're against monopolies. So be careful of everybody's interests. And I tell you, and I'm honest about ours, for example, we're a smaller company generally in digital media. So and we have a lot of different interests. I don't want Google broken up. I don't think that that's good for the country, but I also don't think it's good for us. And I'm honest about that, right? On the other hand, there's people who would love to have Google broken up, yeah. like people who invested in Rumble and are competing with YouTube. Yeah. That's Peter Thiel, JD Vance, literally himself invested, etc. So strange bedfellows here, but everybody's actually just arguing for their own economic interest and not for the average American. But the point that Lena Khan is making is indisputably true. Whenever you say big businesses should be able to get bigger and bigger and bigger and swallow up everyone until there's almost no competition, you're definitely hurting the average consumer and you're definitely hurting small businesses and entrepreneurs. Final thing I'll say is these mega mergers happen to be part of the reason why, actually a big reason why our media is broken, right? Our media has been bought off by these major corporate conglomerates and those major corporate conglomerates control the message, right? So when you look at the things that are broken in American society today, just consider where the money comes from, what companies control whatever institution you're critical of or you're seeing you know, issues with. I, media conglomerates buying up, you know, journalistic outlets has been a terrible, terrible uh, development for journalism in America. And so, I, I love a lot of the work that Lena Khan is doing. I think you make a really good point, Jenk, that you know, if there are issues, uh, those issues should be debated in regard to what she pursues uh, through the work she's doing. But to do away with her entirely because she actually wants to enforce laws that are already on the books is insane to me. And all of these corporate executives are making clear that they're just annoyed that they have to deal with regulations to begin with. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.